this year uh, on a lake and not offshore on seawater. So this is what they call sweet water. It's, uh, it's fresh water and uh, buoyancies of course are different in fresh water than they are in salt water. Salt water is more buoyant and uh, so it is imperative that the boats went out, got out on, onto the uh, lake and got some really good practice laps in to get a feel for the water. I think everybody now knows what this water can do. Early, uh, early qualifying, well it wasn't qualifying actually. Look at this, this is the championship standings as we are now after race one. Dubai Police still the cream of the crop the top of the class in first place uh, number 10 offshore 222 in second place 66 points down now that's a big uh, margin to close up Abu Dhabi 4 in third place and uh, there's the blue roo the one that we were all expecting to take that fight directly to Dubai police they're in fourth place at the moment had major problems uh, in the first race we'll probably see uh, a couple of clips of that a little bit later on meanwhile the boats are starting to line up Waiting for the, the white flag, a white flag will lead and then pushing and pushing. These are a cockpit shot of number 46. You see the driver on the left, the throttle man on the right. And uh, two to two offshore, they had uh, an amazing start from the seventh spot uh, to end uh, in the third position, third step of the podium for Giovanni Carpitella and Darren Nicholson. Team Australia, that's the boat that uh, you Clive just mentioned, uh, they were expected to be the, the, the biggest uh, like contender, the, the, the one who could uh, give some trouble to Dubai police, but they had some trouble as well yesterday, so uh, just uh, a fourth spot for them and now uh, still third in the championship. And that was one of the big moments yeah. of the race. Uh, they'd actually turned, they were chasing one of the Abu Dhabi boats and tried to turn tight but just caught a edge of a wave and when you do that the entire side of the boat digs in and just pulls you around the corner. Exactly Clive, that's why I say when we mention some waves and some knots, of course the, uh, an offshore driver says okay but 20 centimeters, 40 centimeters of a wave is nothing, uh, 10 knots is nothing. Okay, but at these speeds with such light boats uh, and trying to race in kind of a circuit, just a slight wave can completely uh, change the balance uh, and uh, you, you lose the, the boat and you've seen the recovery that Team Australia had to do. This is the podium of yesterday in first position, Arif Azafay Nadir Binendi from the Emirates with the Dubai police uh, overalls uh, green and white. On the left side, Sean Torrente and Faler Al Mansouri from Abu Dhabi 4 and on the right side with the black overalls, Giovanni Capitale and Darren Nicholson. There was, um, there was a, a big crowd uh, on the shores uh, of the lake, uh, of course, uh, Saturday, this uh, perfect season on this beautiful lake, look at these images, uh, everything is so perfect for uh, summertime, and there's a lot of people today as well. While we see the boats uh, getting prepared, uh, the drivers uh, normally stand on the top of the deck, they chat, they talk each other, sometimes they just uh, concentrate, they relax. Uh, sometimes I've seen drivers uh, sleeping on the deck of the boat, <laughs> just some minutes, yeah. Like hey, some chilled. bathing and sleeping is their way to concentrate. While well, we see, this is Nico Calderola sitting with the legs into the cockpit, uh, drinking some water. It's going to be very hot in the cockpit. Indeed like. it is. 31 degrees air temperature at the moment. The sun is beating down and of course they're wearing overalls and fireproofs of that. And it gets very, very sweaty and very, very hot. As I said, just before we saw the, uh, uh, the clips of the, the first race yesterday, they are actually sealed in the boats, aren't they? Yes, it's, yes. Uh, it, it's, uh, so so nothing has changed so what happens why is that no they, they have to, uh, just two small air intakes uh, which provide passive ventilation so if they go fast they will get some air in the cockpit but it's more ventilation to keep out the humidity but the temperature inside there is really really hot and uh, when they come out they are so uh, wet and sweat uh, and thirsty because uh, of course uh, yeah the 45 minutes uh, no breath so there's the starting grid and this is from the qualifying which he did before race one so the qualifying stays the same uh actually uh, no it doesn't this is uh, the starting grid from the race positions from the last race isn't exactly it? exactly I, I got, I got this is the way that the yesterday's race ended uh, as you see uh, uh there will there, there's a yellow line you've seen it was a um, russian team new star because yesterday they had um, they finished in ninth position because they had a problem in the last lap but this morning they had a flip during the uh, free practice uh, they flipped over the boat no harm for the two drivers they came out of the cockpit uh, from the bottom match immediately but the boat had to be towed to the to the dock uh, to the shore 
and they couldn't make it to start. So uh, the 11 spot will be empty. That's why the line was yellow. It's a real shame. I was down at the, uh, the, the, the team box when they were working on the engine, took the covers off, all the water came out, and they were all looking uh, really downcast. I did say, you know, do you, or are you able to make the race? And they said, no. Nah, nah, nah. uh, so they weren't really commenting on that. But it is a real shame because they were, they were showing some good speed yesterday. So, unfortunately, the number nine boat flipped session was stopped for recovery of the boat so it was red flagged on that and uh, the drivers are okay though but they're yeah. not on the line. look at this clive this <laughs> is daniele martignoni warming up uh, yeah alfredo mato is uh, getting into the cockpit while danny used to do that to 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 get his concentration and some stretching as well and uh, we, we call him taz like the tasmanian devil as we said because uh, he's really high all the times so, and this is uh his way of uh taking the concentration and keeping in concentration. Race one yesterday, we did mention the fact that Team Australia had problems. So I'll give you a, a, a little bit of more about that. The engine very early in the race, very early in the race, went into emergency mode. Apparently the engines had overheated. They didn't know why the engines had overheated. That was the worst thing. When I talked to them afterwards, they didn't know the reason why it went into emergency mode. But it didn't last for too long. They got back up to speed again. But yes, they did, while chasing the Abu Dhabi number five boat, caught an edge and that pushed them all the way down again. It halted their charge. It didn't stop them from passing Abu Dhabi five to get fourth place at the end, but it wasn't the ideal race for the Blue Roo, for the boat called the Blue Roo, the Team Australia uh, boat number eight. Yeah, in this shot you can see uh, on boat number 22, Daniele Martignoni is being strapped and uh, fastened to the, to the seat with the belts. That's actually a guy has to do that because uh, it's really, yeah, it's really difficult to move inside this very tight cockpit. Meanwhile, the pace cut has waved the white flag you see on top of your screen on the left. Uh, this means that the drivers have to get into the cockpit while well, they were doing already. But this means uh, please do that now because uh, in some minutes uh, a green flag will be raised uh, and that green flag uh, will mean leave the pontoon and follow me. They will all go far away on the upper part of the circuit. Uh, for the starting uh, procedure. I had a little bit told me that they'll be going in front of the uh, uh, in front of the lake shore and somebody said there might even be some fireworks there. So we don't have to watch out. We don't know exactly what, uh, what's going yeah, to be that's, that's going to be a surprise. Yes, they didn't I even tell us, so we couldn't tell you, but you, you got <laughs> some uh, insider telling you. <laughs> yeah. So I think they'll be going uh, clockwise this time. They won't be taking them up up the top of the circuit they'll be going clockwise around the uh, around the circuit to the top of the circuit and then they will split into three lanes according to their grid positions come down uh, the flag will be raised the green flag will be raised to get them up to speed then down and then they'll be going but uh, still the drivers are getting into the cockpits engines being started and they're being sealed in I can see up the top the uh, number two machine the sweet cat racing and that had its problems last uh, uh, last race as well didn't yes it? yes yes they were like in the middle of the pack but uh, all of a sudden uh, their problem was uh, uh, the belt of one of the superchargers broke uh, and this means these engines are stock engines as we said these are superchargers they have uh, they deliver 400 horsepower each but without the supercharger the, the compressor which is driven by this belt Without that, uh, you probably lose half of the power. So this means they had one engine delivering just 200 power, so they couldn't uh, finish the race. Uh, Nicholas, the team manager, it, he, uh, I think, no, I thought that was just him just walking past, but it's not. He's up by the boat. Uh, he said also uh, they weren't able to fight uh, for the lead in the last race. He said immediately they got out onto the water and they found out they had trim problems as well. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, they didn't complete enough laps to score any points, so it's been not a very good start for them. Let's have a look at the point standing, which we did see a little bit earlier. Uh, Dubai Police on 105, 66 for 222 offshore. Now, they've moved up one place from third into second place because of that uh, race yesterday. The one of the big winners has been Abu Dhabi 4. 
uh, because of their uh, 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 their position yesterday, they've moved up from ninth place into third place in the championship. So uh, uh, Venus Bali, they stay exactly where they are. Maritimo are not here, so they're way down the bottom. But Swicat, because of that uh, uh, non-finish yesterday, that means two non-finishes, uh, two non-point scorers out of three races. And unfortunately, uh, the uh, number two boat is down in 11th place. And in case that Dubai police, well, they are uh, starting from the first position, they won the first three races of the season, Let's say in case they win also this, uh, anyway, there will be a big battle for the second spot because the 2-2-2 offshore with yes. 66 uh, is yes. followed by three boats with 52 points. And that stake for the first is 35, for the second is 30, and then 26, 22, and so on and so forth. So anybody would aim at least for the second spot in order to climb up uh, and be on the second stage of the overall rankings. But we will see because uh, today the conditions are different. Uh, and it's a green flag now, this means uh, you were told to be in the cockpits, all of you are in the cockpits and now you have to leave the pontoon. So this means that uh, one by one all these boats that you see on the screen will leave the pontoon, slowly they will start to follow the pace cut uh, and they will move uh, uh, to the, uh, let's say, top left part of the screen to reach uh, the upper part of the race course. At that moment they will get uh, another flag telling them to align, that will be um, the yellow flag telling them to align. Yellow flag telling them to align. Exactly. Up. And when they are all aligned in the correct pos starting position, there will be another green flag. But this will come uh, will come in a while. Now we'll see because they are going out. We will see if there is this fireworks. Uh, it could Maybe be a surprise. This is what I was yeah. told. If it doesn't happen, blame me. It's what I was told. No problem. <laughs> Uh, we did have an official practice this morning, and remember, I did tell you that uh, uh, because the uh, uh, New Star boat flipped over, it was red flagged and uh, to recover uh, the Russian boat. And for surprise, actually, maybe Dubai police were thinking about making a late run in uh, official practice four, which was this morning, because they weren't uh, the fastest, they weren't in first position on the free practice that was Abu Dhabi 4 who have shown a good turn of speed this weekend as have HPI Racing Team and they are in second in official practice Dubai Police were in third Kuwait finally uh, getting the engines working under that boat uh, in fourth place Wickat Racing in fifth Abu Dhabi 5 in sixth uh, Rebot then Blue Roo down in eighth place in uh, in practice this morning which is a surprise your club Como in ninth Venus Bali 10th 222 offshore in 11th a new start of course without a time flipping the boat and what is most surprising for me in this uh, official practice of this morning uh, Abu Dhabi 4 uh, got the fastest lap with just one, one lap. lap so and they start in second today so this means probably they could find a very good setup a very good uh, balance for the boat but as we say today is more windy it's a little choppy, so maybe the balance that they found this morning is not valid for the conditions uh, of this afternoon. And I didn't have the chance to modify that much. And of course, even if they ch changed something, they didn't have the chance to test in the water. Yeah, the boats are actually coming out now and starting to get behind the Pace Cat. Pace Cat's got uh, it, it's quite a quick boat in its own right, but nowhere near as quick as these. Relative speeds between, the, say, the Pace Cat and a full on. X cat racer uh well the, the pace cat okay it's based on a on a hull similar to the it's a victory hull uh, same manufacturer as most of the of the racing cats uh, the engines are still mercury racing uh, in uh, the case of uh, the racing boats uh, it's a mercury racing 400 uh, uh, similar to stock ones but the ones on the pace cat are 350 so in total there's 100 uh, horsepower less Let's say the Pescat uh, with a good, good driver and the right propellers, the right conditions could get to 170 kph in kilometers per hour. Yeah, it's quite fast enough, thank yeah. you very much. It's still quite fast, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but a racing boat uh, in same good conditions uh, and everything uh, all perfect uh, could get uh, also to 200 kilometers per hour. We had one of the teams uh, coming earlier to Streza this week. On Monday, they had an attempt uh, for the world speed record for such kind of boat, and they got to 198 kilometers per hour. Oh, not quite tipping the tipping the balance. Yeah, uh, boats are still going out. Yeah, oh, and as you see from this shot, uh, you've seen the boats are like actually 
getting in front of the shore of the city of Stresa. I think probably it's by where the hotel uh, Regina Palace Hotel is. Uh, and it's like uh, a homage to the city. Uh, we have the mayor coming here, uh, Mr. Giuseppe Bottini, all the times. There's one boat still stuck out on the pontoon with the cover open at the moment, and that yeah. is the Sweet Cat boat. Now, they haven't had a really good weekend, and they don't want race two to start like this. The, uh, uh, the cover of the cockpit is still open, and they're obviously still working on the boats. Uh, what will be the rules on this? It, if they can get away, yeah, all the boats seem to be facing towards the uh, uh, the shoreline here. We're just looking yeah. outside, away from this sweet cat boat. M meanwhile, yeah, boats. you see they're very busy trying to check. It's probably a pump of some kind because that's the position where some pumps, uh, hydraulic pumps are. You've seen another nice shot. Uh, there was uh, like a camera car in the cockpit of one of the boats. The drivers uh, had the, the, their... Um, arms raised uh, to keep the cockpit open, the lid of the cockpit, the canopy open because they were sitting, standing in front of the hotel and when you're not moving you don't have air coming in the cockpit. As we said, it's very hot. And so, yeah, can you imagine also racing in these conditions? And the crowd line the shore here at Stresa, all the boats are lined up pointing towards the shore. We're expecting, uh, yes, we're expecting fireworks. Let's see what uh, the uh, entire start procedure is going to be interrupted uh, by something uh, special here. Yeah. Look at them. That is a sight. Absolutely beautiful sight. With, uh, with Isola, um, Isola Bella in the back, it's fantastic. Uh, the, these surroundings are like the best uh, we can have. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, yeah we're, we're missing. still waiting for the, uh, the twelfth uh, on the far left, uh, but we still miss it. It's thirteen with the pace cut, uh, and we're missing still the Sueca tracing. Uh, they are in front of us, uh, still trying to fix something. We hope they can make it. They still have some time because of this parade, and uh, let, let's see if they can make it. Well, there's quite a few people on the Sweet Cat boat at the moment. Four, uh, two staff looking inside the cockpit. Uh, two of the workers, one of them almost falling into the cockpit. Two of them uh, standing at the back on the pontoon on the uh, 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 on the sides of the boat, besides the cockpit. And uh, no indication that the engines are get, going to get started on that boat. And it's a red flag for that boat at the moment. Yeah, I was. I was trying to get in touch with the um, time control, the race controller, in order to understand uh, what's the situation in this case. We, we see this red flag at the pontoon. It could mean that uh, the Suecat boat uh, is not allowed to get back in case they can make it, because we still see them working very hard uh, with their uh, heads literally inside the, the sponsons, inside the, the bilges of the boat. I believe it's a hydraulic problem uh, or some kind of uh, electronics. Just seen the fireworks go off from the uh, from the coastline, coastline, lakeside <laughs> here in Stresa. It would have been better in full darkness, but you don't race in darkness, not with these boats. Sorry about that. Pace cat, Pace cat is starting to move out now, and the, all the rest of the boats are following them. And unfortunately for Sway Cat, well, it looks like they will score completely zero here at Stresa. Not a great idea for them. It's still holding them under a red flag. They're still working on the boat, but uh, I can't see any any indication that these engines are going to be yeah. started here. I've been able to talk to the race controller and uh, the red flag for uh, boat number two at the still at the pontoon means uh, so far you can't move. Even in, in the case you can start the boat, don't move now because we have to start the procedure. But in case they can start the boat, uh, they will be allowed with another flag uh, to leave the pontoon. So they're not out of the race uh, at all. It's just a matter of trying and fix it as soon as possible. And that we're watching, and I've got my eye on that all the time because I would love the Swedes to get going here. They brought a, a little uh, uh, a jet board down as yep. well. M meanwhile, can I tell you, it's a funny situation. Uh, it's a pity you can't see it. There's a ferry boat on the other part uh, of the lake. <laughs> but because of so many spectators coming with their own boats to watch the race and stopping by our borders, let's say, they cannot get inside our race course, they are in the way of the ferry. So the, the ferry has to go on that way. And there's so many boats uh, in between. And they're blowing their horn so loud because they <laughs> can't make it. This just to give you an idea of how passionate the public is. Now you see the boats being pulled out to the top of the track now, and they're actually go coming fairly close to the top of the track, and without any indication that the lid's going to be closed on this three-cap boat, I doubt very much if they're going to be able to make the start. 
pace catch coming round the side of the islands at the moment but be coming up to the top of the course when they get to the top of the course they will split into three groups of four and it will go dubai police abu dhabi four uh, that's number folks number three and number four uh, on the inside lane uh, alongside them will be boat number 10 and boat number 8 that's 222 offshore and the Blue Roo Team Australia they're in gate 1 in the second gate will be Abu Dhabi 5 number 5 Yacht Club Como number 20 number 22 Rebot and 46 Venus Bali and in the third the outside gate will be Team Q8 HPI Racing uh, no new star and no sweet cat so only two boats in the outside outside gate here yeah so if you will see if we will see the images from front uh, it will be it will mean the first gate will be on the right part of the screen and you will have the first four boats as uh, you Clive mentioned then another four in the middle and only two because two couldn't make it uh, on the left part of your screen then they will come down towards uh, us let's say and move uh, uh, and turn to the left uh, after that very first gate well, inside starting, the course they are starting to line up now the uh, yeah. police cats got them got the Dubai police boat on its inside they have to stay uh, within 20 meters of each other to have a good start these boats and, uh, and not less than 10 meters apart they're all starting to break up into their various gates here. We're looking at the top of the course and I'm looking out the window waiting for them to turn down onto onto the straight. What it is, is a long straight which cuts this straight through the This is one of the, 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 the commissioners of the day, Jean-Marie Van Lanker, waving at the boats, uh, saying, they're, they're telling uh, the spectators, <laughs> move away, move away. Because you see how many boats are aligned uh, at just at the border of the, of the race course. Uh, and at the same time, the other one, the, the guy standing on the, on the back uh, was saying to the boats, get closer, get closer to us. You see Abu Dhabi number four, they will start in second position. Dubai police is just out of the screens, but he, of course, is there. And uh, yeah, they, they have to move. You see some waves uh, now, now they are going very slow, but still uh, it's not a flat water. Absolutely, we will see when they are speeding up, we will see them jumping a bit. I think, uh, Clive, that we will see some propellers today. That means uh, when they go airborne well, and the prop gets yeah. out of the water. I think we need to uh, move some of these boats back, first of all. It does seem to be a little bit of a hold up with trying to get these, uh, uh, these private boats out of the way. Of look, the look how many. And look at how many there are on the lake today. We saw quite a few yesterday, and uh, just in the camera view that we've got, it's a big lake, and there are a lot of boats out. On just out of my window, I could see at least 30, 35 boats just looking in one direction. Yeah. So uh, uh, you can look at the crowds on the shore and on the on the lakeside, but there are just as many people out on the water as well, and they could be a problem for this race. Pace uh, cat and pace direction, look at how close they are. Yeah, I'm sure most of these people remember when uh, x -Cat came here to Streza in 2013 and 2014. It was an amazing show, a thrilling uh, sport uh, event, uh, and we had like tens of thousands of people, uh, and so we are back uh, this year in 2018. Uh, they want to be part of it. They want to be part of it uh, even too much because they can't get into the race <laughs> course uh, <laughs> at all with their own uh, rib uh, or boat. Yeah, it's a matter of safety, of course. Uh, we love people to be as close as possible to the action, but uh, they will be passing at uh, very high speeds, uh, creating waves and so on, uh, and so it could be difficult. At the same time, I was mentioning you before, the ferry boat, uh, they, uh, he, they had to cross like uh, uh, a lot of boats uh, watching the race. They had to take another course. The ferry boat had to move differently. And even the, the, the police boat could move all the spectators. Yeah, Nico Calderola, but you saw him in the uh, in the cockpit. Boat number 46, number 46. Uh, yeah, it's on the left of your screen. It then uh, this is three three Italian boats uh, in the end. It was uh, six Italian drivers in one shot. You see the yellow flag is getting prepared. It's not uh, waved uh, or yet. It now it now. is. Uh, so this means now you have to align in the correct position. You know where you are standing according to the result of race one. So first goes first and then uh, Green and flag then immediately green flag. Green flag. That yeah. means you're getting up to speed. Green Get flag up to speed drop. when it will be dropped. They will have to push full throttle. And, and they are now. already speeding. So they come yeah. down on a straight we, we line. We don't get the shot on the pace uh, cut, uh, dropping the green flag, but they have started because they are pushing full speed. You see the wakes of the boats uh, getting uh, uh, really uh, the displays uh, in the air. This means they are speeding up and speeding up with these engines.
having to look to see where Dubai Police they got the drop on everybody at the start of the uh, first race I don't know whether they'll be able to do it this time I know the Blue Roo are after them and they said they've got a lot this more to come this is the second gate That's that we've seen the, the middle the first, the first gate, gate is on the far right exactly we now have, they're uh, turning down to the first yeah. corner and it's, it is the Dubai Police followed by the Abu Dhabi road number 4 so close. wow uh, Abu Dhabi is chasing them just outside. They have, they can't stay like uh, aligned because they will get all the sprays and the wakes, so they have to move uh, offset. But we see Dubai police immediately chased by Abu Dhabi number four, Sean Torrente and Fale Al Mansouri had a very good start. Then we saw the Blue Roo and two two offshore, so they kept the first four spots. Uh, we will tell you as soon as they cross the line. Now I'll we tell see, you yeah, this. This is the, the first The blue lap. roux seems to be, look at that uh, Clive, we see the images, the blue roux is probably now in second position. Yeah, this is just Dubai out of, out Police. Of the you look on there, I'll look out the window, I can see yeah. the blue roux in second place and a couple of other boats slowing down. I think that's the uh, uh, Abu Dhabi boat which has slowed down. Uh, it's not yeah, slowed down is, totally but it is no. going backwards now. Yeah, amazing. This is Abu Dhabi and the Blue Roo, they are side by side. Probably Abu Dhabi is trying to keep it. Yeah, it's, uh, it has a little of advantage. You see on the right, uh, covered by all the sprays, is Team Australia. The blue boat uh, is still on the screen, even if you don't see it, because it's <laughs> covered in sprays. Can you imagine being inside and getting all the sprays on your windshield? It's terrible. At the same time, we see him speeding fast on the right. This is 2 to 2 offshore with Giovanni Carpitella and Darren Nicholson. They are trying to get the third position really really fighting these guys in the first four spots the first lap they've got to go around the entire course from the green boys right at the top it's a long lap going all the way around and then they have two long laps to do in a banana shape and uh, there is a, a set of uh, yellow boys in the middle of the racetrack and that is the only right hander on the track they've got to uh, go round those and back out so we've got 14 short laps to do and two long laps just having a look at the uh, blue roo there but still out in front it's the cream of the crop that's dubai police right next to them is that still the abu dhabi number four boat because they were showing some yeah, serious you see how speed wide today. dubai police when they're drifting and drifting they're trying to keep the top speed so this means drifting a lot uh, having a, a larger uh, trajectory a larger path uh, on the band but dubai police is clearly in front now followed by abu dhabi number four and we see on the left part of the screen is two to two offshore Bang. so they 2 to 2 offshore through. overtook Team Australia for the third position. And we have the first lap uh, is finished. Uh, so Dubai Police in first place, then uh, Abu Dhabi 4, 2 to 2 offshore, Team Australia. Yacht Club Como in fifth spot. They uh, it's going good. They started well. fifth. In fifth position, then Ribo. I think this is a good start. Yeah, they gain, they both gain one position to the expenses of Abu Dhabi number five. Bad start for them from fifth to seventh spot. Yes, it's really, really sad. I saw them, one of the boats at the top slowing down and uh, went coming off the corner. HBI, the last one through the gate, so uh, uh, their, their vaunted speed that they had in the first race hasn't come to, uh, come to the fore in this race. It is Dubai Police once again who've got the drop on everybody. And once again, unfortunately, it's Team Australia who've got to try to force their way through uh, past Abu Dhabi 4, which has shown a real fleet foot this weekend some real good speed but the longest boat the uh, the longest boat in the competition and we start to see advantage. some props look this is abu dhabi following the the wakes uh, the, the wake of uh, uh, dubai police uh, number three this is boat number 96 francois pinelli at the throttle you see how he was moving constantly his hands on the throttle levers rosario schiano was on the right y you see we start to see some props because they're jumping actually the wind and the and the wakes they make jump. You see, that they have to stay all offset because, as I said, you can't stand behind another boat, otherwise the visibility will be zero. So far, the, uh, uh, the camera foreshortens the view. Those, uh, those uh, pleasure boats are not as close as you think they are, but it's still, once again, the Dubai police, and we're waiting for somebody to be able to cut them back. First thing we need to do is check uh, the lap times so the next time they come across. We've had a flying lap off the top, off the big lap. Now they've just done one of their short laps. They're doing 14 short laps and two long laps. This is the Dubai police. Look at the way it skips across the water. It's trying to keep that speed up, trying to keep it just barely off the top of the water. And yeah. Abu Dhabi 4 doing exactly the same thing. We want to see how the uh, 
uh, the rest of the boats are faring and Team Australia actually has been coming under attack now. Yeah, oh, by Yacht number Club 20, Como. Yacht Club Como, the black boats, yeah, they're getting closer to Team Australia. Team Australia is not going 100% for sure because the, their potential is much higher. They have some small issue because they're not at their top speed. Meanwhile, Clive, we're seeing, uh, let's say, a sad scene in front of our eyes. Uh, the pontoon, we have the Swaycat boat, it's being pulled back to the crane to go back uh, on land because they couldn't make it, they couldn't start it. So let's have a look at some of the lap times after the first flying look lap. Look at the shocks here. they had in this cockpit. Yeah, there was a... Yeah, banging up and down. But yeah. then again, they've been around this course now twice and they're running into weight problems. Whoa, that is a long... I think somebody's gone for their long lap. That might Probably, be Yacht yeah, Club. Probably, yeah, they're going for the long lap uh, immediately. Now, Yacht Club were, f were fighting with Team Australia, and this could be a great little advantage for them if they can get their long lap out of the way early on. They can go up to uh, up to the tall boys, uh, right at the top. They have two laps. They were right behind Team Australia, in the spray of Team Australia. They're going to uh, do their one of their uh, long laps early so that maybe they'll have an advantage and can keep that speed up so when they come back onto the course and uh, Team Australia have to go for their long lap or one of their two long laps they'll end up in front of them without having to pass the boat on the water that's the way things are going at the moment lap times at the moment what have we got fastest lap out there at the moment still must be due by police and they are 2.5 yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, seconds ahead of Abu Dhabi 4 and 5 seconds to the good of 222 offshore Blue Roo 8 seconds back Your Club Como was another 1 second behind them but as I said they've gone up for their uh, long lap up to the top of the course uh, the rest of them are going around now it has freed up Team Australia uh, from the wake of uh, uh, your club Como to be able to if they've got extra speed in that machine and the team assured me they did they had a lot more to come they said from yesterday we still haven't seen it going behind the islands now this is the Dubai police boat in full flow look at it just floats over the waves it seems to be in its element here they've got this machine set up so well not taking a dig not digging into the uh, uh, the water at all just floating over it and making that turn almost at an airplane and not uh, well it is indeed a flying boat and they have pulled the gap again on Abu Dhabi 4 behind them and this that's a 222 offshore boat number 10 behind them and there is nothing that anybody seems to be able to do about Dubai police at the moment they've got a boat supremely set up for the conditions they're absolutely flying through their uh, uh, second full lap it's actually three laps now because the first one where they go all the way around the course actually does count yeah Meanwhile, I was trying to fix any weather well, communication problem with the timing area. So at the moment, we can't tell you exactly the, the timing of the boats, but of course, we can see them in their positions. And uh, now there's another ferry has to pass, uh, and the police boat, uh, the police boat, yeah, has the siren on to move all the spectators. There's so many to watch this race. Look at Dubai police and Abu Dhabi it's, number four the gap trying. It's huge now, isn't it? Yeah, it increased, it increased. This is, of course, the perfect conditions to be on top because, uh, because uh, Arif al and Nadir Benindi know that when you are in front, they have clear water in front of them. They, what, like the strategy they had yesterday was like pushing as much as they could to gain uh, enough advantage to take their long laps in the second part of the race uh, in order after the long laps to still be in the lead. Oh, they're starting to kick up over the there's some swells out there right in the middle of the lake and uh, it's quite obvious to see it and long swells as well we did have a lot flatter water yesterday but today we don't and uh, the wind is just pulling up the water just slightly across the surface not in little waves but long slow bouncy ones and that uh, is looks like it was getting worse since the first first uh, fourth qualifying earlier on this morning so and meanwhile, maybe they're getting into conditions that they don't don't really know at the moment. Yacht Lake uh, Como, Yacht Club Como went for their uh, long lap, the first long lap. So their uh, chasing of uh, Team Australia in fourth position for the moment is over because they took the long lap. 
Same as uh, Abu Dhabi number five, I guess, because I've seen, yeah, it's Abu Dhabi number five. And also uh, both 96, uh, HPI Italia with François Pinelli and uh, Rosario Schiano. We're looking at three different things at the moment. We've got a window directly out onto the lake. And we can see out there what's going on. The trouble is when they start to cross over through the, through the uh, laps, we can't actually see it. So we have to rely on what's going on on the timing and also uh, what's going on on the screen. Now you can see fourth, the Blue Roo still now. Kuwait is into fifth place. Uh, your club Como into sixth place. Seventh is Rebot and uh, uh, Abu Dhabi 5 they're not showing any speed they're down in 8th place, ninth is Venus Bali and 10th is HPI Racing Team and we expected more speed from the team which is carrying sponsorship from Mercury itself and of course these big Mercury engines they've, uh, quite a few of them uh, are actually held by the HPI team I think they've got about 8 engines in all yeah, meanwhile yeah, yeah. nobody can catch Dubai police. No, and the first Every three don't, don't want to take their long laps. They're still chasing one another. It's Dubai police and then Abu Dhabi 4 and 2 to 2 offshore, still with uh, no long laps taken. While in fourth position at the moment is Kuwait because uh, all the others have taken their long laps. So Kuwait temporarily is in fourth position. Good for them. They have a, quite a faster boat than the previous year, uh, the um, Kuwaitian duo of Abdul Latif. Uh, Alomani and uh, Mustafa Aldashti. Team Australia is now in uh, fifth spot because uh, they have taken their first long lap and uh, all the others. There's a big gap from Team Australia and Venus, which is number 22, Daniele Martignoni and uh, Alfredo Mato in the cockpit. Uh, while on the screen uh, we see this is a very nice front shot uh, of uh, Abu Dhabi. Exactly, Abu Dhabi number four, Sean Torrente and Fale Al Mansouri. At, there's two boats from Abu Dhabi, number four and number five. Number four, uh, you see, it's a victory built boat, it's a typical shape of the victory boats, while the other one is different in the back part, uh, it's a bit curved, uh, and it's uh, number five, it's uh, built uh, by MTI, by Randy Schism in USA. There's another manufacturer of boats, boat number 96, uh, which is currently in 10th position. Uh, it's a Doug Wright, uh, still from USA, a Doug Wright boat. The fourth one in the championship would be Maritimo, built in Australia, but uh, we've seen just in the ranking before the race, they were last with zero points because they crashed in the first race in Fujairah two months ago and they had to, to send back the boat to Australia. They couldn't make to come to Streza in time. And it's a real shame because uh, Australia not getting no points back that they really wanted to do this round after the disaster that befell them at Fujairah and uh, they haven't been able to close up. They re were so confident when I spoke to them before this race. They said they had a lot more to come and uh, definitely they could take the race straight to Dubai Police. But once again, Dubai Police, if you have a look at the records behind Dubai Police, they, it, goes, it goes way back. They've been winning since, you know, they just changed their name, but uh, 2012, uh, 2013, 2014, they were called FASA 3. Uh, Dubai 3, uh, they were called in 2015. Victory 3, then 2016, 2017. And they've been winning all those years. That they are just so used to winning, they're in the habit yeah. of it, and nobody can touch them. When XCAT was born, uh, they won the first year, and then they won uh, five years in a row. They didn't, the victory team won last year, but it wasn't them because they left victory team uh, in the end of 2016. This Dubai police boat uh, is not by victory. I mean, it's built by victory, but it's not managed by the victory team. They are on their own. They uh, took their, their whole stuff with them. And uh, we stress these days, Clive, this fact of uh, how important it is to have uh, uh, a team of people who know each other so good. Yeah. Uh, we, we mentioned this uh, yesterday in race one, the fact that these two, uh, driver and throttle man, have to work together as one. It's basically one man with four hands. Yeah, exactly. Or, or as they say, Arif uh, Al-Zafan and Nadir Binin in boat number three, we are two drivers and one brain. Yeah. Look at uh, these jumps and th th they're pushing. Even if they are leading, even if it's a bit uh, wavy, they are pushing always to the limit. These are really professional guys. Uh, always trying to give their best and improve on their best. It's so good for these guys to be able to take this out onto a lake with not too many swells to show off the aerodynamics of this. There's a lot of power in these boats, but all these boats theoretically have the same power. They've got the same engines. They've got these uh, ROS uh, 400 horsepower engines, 800 horsepower in total, with the competition bottom end. 
So there's really no difference between the boats except in the aero and the way it's driven. So this really does come down to driver and how the boat is designed and the boats are always being refined, aren't they? You take it away and they're, they're worked on again, they're brought back for another race after being worked on uh, aerodynamically. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. They can change uh, the, the shape of the sponsors, they can change in the back of the tunnel, they can add uh, some uh, small parts uh, in order to change the flow of air, the air flow under the boat. And uh, sometimes they even cut. Yeah, you see uh, Rosario Schiano and François Pinelli. Look at the hands uh, of François Pinelli, how they are constantly moving. The, these are the two levers uh, commanding the engines, the accelerator. And it's always up and down, up and down, up and down. Because as you were saying, and uh, it, it, was, it was fairly new to me to see the, the props, they de designed to be half out of the water anyway. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's the reason why you see this uh, wake uh, so high that the sprays going high and uh, far away back uh, in the back of the boat is called the rooster tail because it's shaped actually like the tail of a rooster. And this is because the propellers are, uh, are spinning for half of part, uh, are spinning out of the water, so they lift a lot of sprays. This is the best way to go in uh, fast boats because uh, you reduce uh, to a half uh, the water drag of the propeller blades themselves. If you have a look, next time you'll see the front of the boat, they are actually flying. There's just a little bit in the water to give them forward movement. It gives them a lot of forward movement, but all the speed is because they're getting no drag from the, from the water at all. If you see these, you'll just hit a little swell and the boat will leap out of the water and fly. They will fly here. This is a, a 222 offshore currently in third place at the moment. And uh, there's Team Australia. I think they're still in fourth place, chasing hard though. Yeah, they always look the fastest when they are. we have this uh, side shot because the boat is so sleek and so long. In the end, they're not going as fast as expected this time. Uh, they are chasing, I would have said, like uh, them fighting directly with uh, Dubai police in the first position, but uh, that's not the case now for uh, Jan Trivgebraten and Paul Viregnissen. Let's uh, remember, it's uh, an Australian boat, Australian team, uh, but there's uh, two Norwegian drivers in the cockpit. Yeah, it makes for a strange mix of accents in the team pit box. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I can even tell if I'm not English speaking uh, as a mother language, <laughs> but I can tell it's weird. <laughs> now they're turning down on to, uh, to, to face you, Team Australia. Look at the way they just leap out of the water. Just lost picture there, which is a real shame. But it really does look fast here, but they're not making any ground on third place at the moment. And they need to do that. Really does look like a sleek boat. Uh, but apparently it no, there's something not quite right with that boat at the moment. Waiting for them to come through on uh, yet another lap here. And it's still the Dubai police leading uh, by a long, long way now. Very few people have taken their long laps. There's quite a bit of a gap between a couple of these uh, uh, riders out on the water. So nobody's really interfering with them, uh, with each other spray-wise and weight-wise. You can see what's going on. The... Uh, Team Australia boat now turning in. It was a little bit wide, trying to stay out of the wake of the boat in front of it. Now taking an inside track, if it can, just to try to keep away from the spray from the other boat in front of you. That's inside the Venus Barley boat, I think. That one, number 46, with Nico Calderola at the wheel. And a long look over the top of this lake. That's one of the Abu Dhabi boats coming down I think this is in second place the Abu Dhabi machine Abu Dhabi 4 uh, I could give you a definitive either when we see the number or when we see the back of the boat and uh, this is the Kuwait team boat just flying out of the water there they're developing a, a serious amount of speed our Kuwait a great shots from the front as it just tucks the sponsors into some of these waves wants to keep off of these uh, waves as much as possible we did see team australia when they came to uh, uh, race last uh, the last race uh, yesterday and they tried to take a, a a nice tight turn it's a long boat and unfortunately the inside sponsor caught just a little uh, uh, little wave and dug in and that thing it pulled them away kuwait coming across the line and they are in a big battle at the moment. I think they're, they're just taking the wide line as they go around. Another boat. No, they're actually, I think, going up to do Kuwait. are going off to do one of their two long laps, mandatory long laps here. 
Uh, they were in front of two boats at the moment. This might not be the best tactical decision that they've made because it's nice to be able to take a long lap when you're behind other boats because it gives you a bit of free air. It's Abu Dhabi 5 just going through the, uh, uh, the finish line there. So Kuwait up for their long lap. And another shot to Team Australia as the camera pans around. But still, I can assure you, it is Dubai Police out in the lead. And Abu Dhabi 4 can do nothing about that at all. That lead is opening up all the time. And Clive and Becca, I got back my mic. Uh, I will answer to, to, to check some things because we are technical issues also no, behind the scenes everything's fine anyway yeah yeah <laughs> after nine laps uh, we have uh, of course dubai police uh, in the lead uh, and abu dhabi number four is training 35 seconds this means that even if uh, dubai police uh, should take uh, one long lap they still would be in the lead so that's the the, the kind of advantage they wanted to gain uh, on the second Kuwait uh, because they didn't take any long laps uh, all of a sudden at the moment is in third spot but we will see 2-2 two -two -two offshore is the actual the real um, boat in third place uh, one minute is the gap uh, well one minute already uh, trailing uh, in the back of Dubai police then team Australia Yacht Club Como Abu Dhabi number no. five uh, and Ribbo and Venus Pali HPI racing team it's this quite is obvious from the way that uh, the Dubai police boat was actually riding the waves that they were extending that lead the team Kuwait boat they've just gone for their uh, first of their long laps so they'll they'll have dropped back and uh, they were in a little bit of a battle at the time but they were in front of the other two boats behind them uh, by about a second or two and I didn't think that it would be the ideal situation to take your uh, your mandatory or one of your mandatory fast laps in but apparently maybe that was the situation they were in they know they've got to take two long laps and just had to take it as and when and uh, they thought well let's go and do that now yeah 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 the shot is for uh, Dani Martignoni and Alfredo Amato. Now the Ribo and uh, Videx boat. Uh, it's a very captivating livery. They changed it uh, this year. This is really flashy. It's more uh, uh, keen to Dani Martignoni uh, way. <laughs> it matches the personality of the drivers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It matches perfectly. Uh, he actually decided to go for that livery. That you see the turn now, they, they, they move and shake uh, sideways. Uh, it's so tough. Even with these uh, small waves, uh, it's so hard to control the boats. You will see them jumping. This is uh, again uh, Venus Bali 46. They keep it very high with the nose. Uh, yeah, it can be a way, but you see uh, the danger is uh, you lift the nose too much, then you get all the air uh, smashing the, the bottom of your boat, uh, and that's the, the way to flip it over. But they're really putting the hammer down now and trying to close that gap. I, th I think that's the reason that it, it looks a lot more flighty than the boat in front. And they really are pushing hard. That boat out of the water two or three times down the main straight as they come through the gate again to start another lap. Yeah. The boat in front is uh, just gone for a short lap and they're going for their short lap as well so no long laps are still in this battle together and the Venus Barley boat trying desperately to close up uh, on the boat in front of them yeah we've seen that 46 boat uh, with a nose that high this is uh, also a matter of how you control the trims and the trims should be in the hands of uh, Andrea Comello who is also the throttle man with one hand uh, he uses the throttles with the other hand he uses the trims and uh, on, his, uh, on his side, uh, Nico Calderola is um, uh, holding the wheel. Meanwhile, we Meanwhile, are back uh, also. The timing, yes. The, uh, so, yeah, Dubai just having Police. A look. Sorry, carry on, carry on. Carry Dubai on. Police is still in the lead, but now the, the gap with Abu Dhabi is less. It's 12 seconds because they took one of the long laps, uh, while Team Australia is going for uh, another one of them. So we have Abu Dhabi 4 in uh, second position, uh, to the two offshore uh, and all the others who will tell you as soon as they cross once again the finish line. We are uh, in the 10th lap at the moment, there's still uh, 7 to go for the finish. So uh, it, it's going to be, the, there's still a lot to say, a lot to do. And Abu Dhabi 4 goes through to start the next lap from them and you'll be able to see the gap as it comes up. Rebots running on their long lap now because they were in front of the Venus Barley boat and uh, Venus Barley boat desperate to try to close that gap on them. Rebot has said, well, I'm not even going to let you sh see if you're closing the gap now. We're going for our long lap. You can carry on on the slow lap. That is, in fact, if 
uh, Venus Bali decide they will do exactly the same. And we'll see. It could be another tactic. Yeah. It was a long lap for Kuwait, uh, yeah, all of a sudden they, they found themselves in third position, now they are in sixth after their long lap, and uh, yeah, as we said, yeah, Abdul Latif Alomani and Mustafa Dashti from Kuwait, uh, of course, uh, they're doing much better this year, they changed the boat uh, and it's proving to be a very good boat. It was a beautiful shot, we've seen the boat number four um, in the front uh, and another boat passing by <laughs> in the back. Uh, on the other side, this is uh, an effect of the lens, of course. Uh, the circuit is quite wide, but uh, yeah, it's been uh, yeah, well, uh, this looking is part close. Of the complex down up yeah. here in the north of Italy, you've got Lake Como on one side. This is the big one. That's why it's Lake Major, Lake Maggiore. It is a big lake, and it's where you can uh, where you can really stretch your legs in these kind of boats. Remember, these are going up to 200, close to 200 kilometers an hour. This is low flying. And it's uh, at its tightest to the surface. Yeah, yeah. So Dubai Police, Abu Dhabi 4 to the two offshore seems to be seem to be stuck in the first uh, three spots. Uh, Team Australia in fourth uh, has to do better than than that because they they can go faster. I believe from this shot, this is number 20. Yes, Serafino Barlesi and Alex Barone on their black boat uh, yacht club Como. They are now in fifth position, which is very good uh, for them. Uh, Lesserman in pole position, they did third, the third time, but yesterday they didn't have such a good race and they finished, uh, I believe, uh, in sixth position. So they started in sixth position today and they are fifth now. So, once again, Dubai Police, they've got a massive lead. Um, it's, it's coming up to about 40, 45 seconds now over Abu Dhabi 4. Uh, they've already gone through the, uh, uh, the uh, start and finish line here on the track. I can't call it point, but and they are already coming down the back part of the course and this is before Abu Dhabi 4 has even crossed the finish line. Abu Dhabi 4 go through now and that is a huge, huge lead. HPI, they've just lapped the HPI boat. So HPI, unfortunately, they are going far too slow to be a factor in this race and they won't be getting in the way of anybody chasing them behind. And then the next boat to cross the finish line, uh, and it's not a finish line at the moment to do another lap, that's the 222 offshore boat number 10, which goes through. They are actually closer to um, uh, Team Abu Dhabi than Abu Dhabi is to uh, uh, the Dubai police boat, which is really pulling away. And the Blue Roo is trying to chase down that uh, number 10, 222 offshore. Yeah, then, yeah, you see here, no, this is the the back of the race should be, no, it's a boat number 96. Uh, we've seen uh, Abu Dhabi on the left part. Uh, you see the different shape of this boat, the different shape of the canopy, the the windows. This is a Doug Wright built boat. Uh, for instance, you can see both of them. Look at the windows, how they differ. The center pillar is completely different. It's uh, tighter on the boat on the right, which is a victory, and much That's wider on the Doug Wright boat. But that doesn't count. What counts uh, is the, the, the part that stays in the water yes. and the gets there, that just uh, windows and the pillar. Uh, if they can fly, they can fly. And uh, setting these boats up, uh, the weight is distributed inside the sponsons, the way the, uh, uh, what kind of propeller they have in. The propellers are in fact the gears here. So when they're out practicing, the boats come in way. Yeah, I told you we would see some propellers. Nice. Uh, you were mentioning the propellers and they say, okay, here we are, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, of course, the changing in. the propellers is like uh, changing the gears, but on a car you can do every time. In this case, you, you do before the race, uh, you do before getting in the water, and then that's it. It's uh, a balance between acceleration and top speed. In this case, uh, this was uh, quite a fast circuit, but because of the conditions today, with some waves, uh, maybe they went for a slightly uh, shorter propellers. Okay, 10 laps done now by Dubai Police. Abu Dhabi uh, 4 behind them by a massive, a massive amount. It's, uh, it's close to 40, 45, might, might be even a minute now. I'd have to get a stopwatch on them. And, uh, and find out. But uh, it is all spread out now and 222 offshore. It's, I think the battle now is to see if the Blue Roo Team Australia can close that gap and take a podium off of uh, the uh, number 10 boat, 222 offshore. If they can do that, they will have uh, uh, pulled back something on this. And that's the HPI boat going past another one. Now I thought the HPI was lapped by one of the uh, Team Abu Dhabi boats. But maybe it was just the uh, the camera angle that showed it going past another boat. Now the other one's gone up the inside. So another lap done by uh, 
uh, the number 10, I think it's 222 offshore, it's just gone past HPI. So they are, uh, that's the third place, just gone past HPI again. So they're three down now, HPI, been lapped by three boats in front of them. And uh, I was to trying past. to do some math, Clive, because uh, the, the first top, the, the top three positions seems to be quite consolidated now. Dubai Police, Abu Dhabi, actually it's Abu Dhabi number four. Uh, it says Abu Dhabi five, but it's not. It's Abu Dhabi five is in. Uh, no, it, it's, no, I think that's it, uh, the timing. That's is wrong. Yeah, it was probably uh, a lot. Water's boat, gone uh, into yeah, the timing, been, I think. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably the sprays. Uh, we, with this situation, uh, Dubai Police um, scoring 35 points if they win w would go to 140 out of four races, 35 at stake, it means four wins in four races. Then 2-2 two two offshore with the third position today would get uh, 26, uh, they were second, they would uh, uh, still maintain their second position with uh, 94, uh, 92 points. And uh, Abu Dhabi number four uh, would uh, go in third position alone because at the moment they are in um, third position. It's Abu Dhabi four, uh, Team Australia, and Abu Dhabi five. They are even. In this case, they would go on third position by themselves. We, we will get, see. We get uh, sometimes transponder issues when they cross the line. And it does say Abu Dhabi five are in second place, but they're not. It is Abu Dhabi four, then 222 two, two offshore, and then the Blue Roo again. And uh, need to look out the window to, to see them going through because I'm sure that uh, the one thing in the mind of the Australia team is to close that gap. It's 2-2-2 two, two, two offshore in the final podium position at the moment and the Australians do not want to come away from this race without standing on a podium in at least one race and that's the aim because we were expecting, I've said it before, we'll say it again, that uh, Dubai police will be in a major battle with the Australians, hasn't come to fruition at this time and, uh, and look how close these two boats are. These are from actually the same owner. Um, number 22 uh, is driven by Alfredo Mato and Dani Martignoli. Alfredo Mato is owner of this boat, number 22, and also boat number 46, the one in front of them. And, uh, and Rebot had gone off for its uh, long lap to try to uh, get a little bit of speed on the on the Venus Barley boat. Yeah, and that's the reason why they front, found it. It was in front of it at the time. Exactly. It's, it's come back and unfortunately it's behind it because I don't think the Venus Barley boat took its long lap at that time, so it's behind it again. Yeah, not yet, exactly, exactly. So in the end they will uh, switch positions uh, again uh, when they finish their long laps. As for uh, Yacht Club Como, they're still uh, in uh, fifth position. Uh, uh, behind the, like the, the top ones, Dubai Police, Abu Dhabi 4, 2-2-2 two, two offshore and Team Australia. Uh, Serafino Barlesi at the helm of the black boat number 20, uh, Yacht Club Como, is really experienced on the lake. Alex Barone is also um, a proper offshore driver. Serafino Barlesi has been racing in offshore many times, but also on the lakes many times. He's won so many world championships and is also champion on Lake Como, which is the lake just uh, behind us, uh, it's like the other side of the mountains, uh, beside Lake Maggiore. Uh, it's not the same lake, I know who loves one uh, normally doesn't like that much, the other one, they're beautiful both to me, but Serafino has been winning uh, some races on Lake Como uh, many times, uh, and now on the lake here he's behaving uh, very well. Abu Dhabi 5, though, did show them in second place absolutely briefly. They're in sixth place. You just saw the Q8 boat going through there. They're in seventh place and chasing them down. Then it's Venus, Bali, Rebolt, and, uh, uh, and HBI Racing have been lapped by the front three at the moment. Dubai Police, but I'm not even going to use a, use a watch on this. They're so far ahead, it's ridiculous. They can park and go fishing for a little <laughs> while uh, yeah. before anybody can catch them. Team Australia. I want to see who's in front and how close they are because Team Australia uh, had 222 offshore in their sights. There is the Dubai police boat going through, coming down on the straight at the moment. And I think they've knocked it off a bit and knocked it off quite a bit because this is uh, Abu Dhabi 4 coming through and chasing them. So possibly the Dubai, Dubai police uh, have actually done one of their long laps and that's the reason that the gap has come down again. So Dubai Police and uh, Abu Dhabi 4 together, almost. Dubai Police just going through the start finish line at the moment and uh, coming, going up to the uh, top of the first turn. So not a tight little turn here. You can take it tight, but a lot of people, and especially uh, the top teams, 
will just try to keep the speed up, maximise the speed on the boat, float over the water and take that turn as gently as possible. They are in fact around about 15 seconds, 16, 17 seconds in front of Abu Dhabi 4 who's gone through. And Team Australia on the screens uh, seem not to make it to chase to the two offshore. The gap was uh, just uh, six seconds before. Now it seems to be increased a bit. We'll see by the timing. They try uh, all they can. Uh, the, the first turn after the finish line is the trickiest one because you, you really don't know how to take it uh, if tight uh, or uh, wide. And they're always trying to do something different from their opponent in order to find uh, uh, to, to close the gap. You see the, both of them to the two of shore uh, in front on the left of the screen uh, and Team Australia in the back. They have to move offset from the wake, of course, uh, as we always say, not to be disturbed. But now the, the gap uh, is more. This is uh, once again uh, number 46, uh, Nico Calderola is a former rally driver, uh, rally cars of course, uh, so he should be used to, to uh, get shocks on the steering wheel and that's why he picked that position. He will be the driver at the helm uh, and Andrea Comello at the throttles. But unfortunately for Team Australia, they always seem to be on the wrong side of the boat in front of them. They had to take a wide line there for the uh, for the right-hander, coming up to the top of the course now, the tightest course, and this being the longest boat, these tight corners do not su suit it at all. It needs, a, it needs long flowing corners and some lovely long fast straights to really, uh, to really stretch its legs. And it's been held back a little bit here with this, uh, this, this course. Of course, it's a, uh, an anti-clockwise course. I think the only anti-clockwise course we've got uh, in the calendar. Yes, yes, yes. And that's, uh, that's bad for them. You know why, Clive? Because I was talking to some of them. I said, but what's the point? I, I kind of had an idea, but they explained me. Uh, because um, as the driver, or the one holding the wheel, is sitting on the right part of the cockpit, uh, Any time you have a left-hander, you are faster from the buoy. So uh, it, it's better for them to have uh, all the right turns because the, 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 the driver can see the buoy just outside of the cockpit yeah. be, beside uh, his very eyes. So in this case, uh, most of the turns are the other part uh, and it's worse for them. There's only one right turn uh, with the yellow buoys. Uh, so in this case, it's trickier for them. So driving on the wrong side of the road again. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Looking at As you're police. British, uh, you know this kind of right or wrong, uh, <laughs> right or left. Oh dear, <laughs> won't go there. We just won't go there. Do no. my police. Uh, what can we call it? Flying. If you step back a little bit from the screen, it looks like they're not even on the water, they're just blasting out a white spray behind them. Yeah, and that, that's probably an overlap boat. You see the sprays; yep. they're getting by. It can disturb them a bit. But they are used to because they are so fast all the time, so they are even used to to overlap uh, and, and to lap other. Yeah, that's yeah. over W4 chasing them down, and they've really turned tight into that corner. They're trying. It it doesn't seem it you know it just seems so pleasant to be out on the lake in these conditions, but they are sweating buckets in that cockpit, trying to do everything they can to shorten the distance between these two corners. And what that does is upsets, you see they turn really tight there to get out of the wake of the uh, Dubai police boat in front of them and really put it down. But that, that turn sheds speed. Anytime you're doing a tighter turn, the tighter the turn, the more, shit, more speed you're going to shed from the boat. You don't want to do that. But you need also to stay out of the wake of the boat in front yeah. of you. And, and, and it's a trade-off. Uh, yeah. uh, sometimes uh, it's better one way, sometimes the other one. Uh, and, and it's not like a, a racetrack, uh, like a circuit, where it's, the conditions are always the same. Because this, uh, any time a, a wave is different from the other, so any time you pass the same buoy, it's different. But it is a lot easier, I would think, in some respects for Dubai police to do this. In, in conditions down in the Gulf, you do get a lot of conditions like this offshore. Uh, it is it's quite, uh, quite a, you can find some really nice sheltered areas down in the Gulf to, uh, and conditions will sometimes be a little bit like a lake. Uh, and there, there are other ones where you've got real waves, you've got to jump and bang your way around the course yeah, yeah. and you come I must covered in bruises. Last December we raced in Dubai but we were uh, on the palm, actually on the crescent of the palm and so it was a bit rough there and uh, yeah, like even two meter waves but Arif, Alzafen and Adir Benindi, uh, they are good in all conditions. <laughs> they be racing also in class one, okay, the boats are much bigger but the waves are much higher and they are good as well. Uh, I mean, this is uh, the, the perfect combo. As we see them, they just uh, overlapped uh, number 46, uh, which is the blue boat uh, on the screen now. 
no, actually it's number 22, pardon, Videx Ribot, yeah, with Dani Martignoni and Alfredo Amato. And Abu Dhabi should come uh, from the left of the screen uh, quite soon. Uh, and he's still chasing them, we hope, as soon as possible. But I think the gap uh, is uh, it's a big one. It's 10 seconds in the last lap because uh, still of the long lap strategy. But uh, actually it's more, as boat number four uh, overlaps uh, the 22 boat. Yeah, it's gone up the inside of that uh, that boat, so it's quite a few boats now uh, down. Uh, that's Rebot, the next one to be lapped, if they have time, will be Venus Barley, which is still in front of Rebot at the moment. So two, two boats have been lapped in this track as uh, Dubai Police scream through your screen. Uh, Kuwait saw some speed from Kuwait, but they haven't been able to catch the Abu Dhabi 5 boat in front of them. Your Club Como and Blue Roo still locked uh, in, in battle with uh, the number 10 boat 222 offshore, which is in third place, and still in exactly the same order that they've been for the past couple of backs. It's been so difficult to pass here. There's Dubai Police going through. And Abu Dhabi now, Abu Dhabi 4. At the moment I was watching at the, at the standings, uh, beside uh, a new star they flipped this morning uh, in free practice, beside Sueka they couldn't make it. I think uh, some disappointment is for Abu Dhabi number 5, uh, which we mentioned so little because they are in 6th spot, it's uh, much uh, below uh, what they can do, much uh, less than they can do. Uh, Rashid Al Tayer, uh, Majid Al Mansouri, they, they won races, uh, they are champions, they are professional drivers. So, <coughs> pardon me, six spot is not good for them, also because they were in third position in the championship. Same points uh, as Abu Dhabi number four, their sister boat uh, and uh, Team Australia. And now they are losing points uh, on both of them. That boat is absolutely flying. Every time it comes around that corner past the island, it just seems to almost take off. It's like a like a, a seaplane well it is in effect a seaplane which doesn't quite take off a crano plan oh, yeah, yeah. Is, if i remember it correctly <laughs> exactly that, it exactly. is actually it, it is really floating over those waves and it, the, the 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 beautiful thing about it is it's going in a turn it's coming off all these ripples and uh, the long frequency waves which do occur in lakes like this and it's just floating over the whole lot of them and uh, no wonder they are leading so well and so easily the boat is set up like an absolute peach you've seen Nico Calderola uh, saying uh, two with his hand to uh, Andrea Comello uh, it's probably some kind of uh, setup uh, because it doesn't mean uh, we white have two flag. laps left. Yeah, white flag now, and this means this is the last lap for all the boats. I was, okay, no, no problem. I thought I saw some <laughs> flames, uh, but it's just, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it happened once that they, uh, they, they this very boat, Arif al Zafena de Benini, got an engine on fire, but it's not the case at all. So this is the last lap for them. The only right-hander on the course, they are at the top of the course at the moment. They go up to the tight turn right at the top of the course, then fly down between the two islands and turn onto the start finish straight. There's nobody to touch them. They are just absolutely running away with this. It's uh, uh, last year's champions taking the first two races of the season down in Fujaira. And this time, well, unless something drastic really happens, and the good news is that so far during this race, we haven't seen any problems at all. Nobody even catching an edge uh, to, uh, to lose a lot of time. They've all been right on their maximum at the performance that they could do with what they had at the time. And who's got the better boat? Well, you can see who's got the better boat. It's the two in the Dubai police team. Arif al fine and Nadia Ben-Hendi. The yeah. victory boat is just absolutely solid in these conditions, coming down between the two islands. Images are all for them, as it happens uh, all the time. So when it's the last lap, you see beautiful shot. Uh, Isola dei Pescatori on the left, uh, Isola Bella on the right. Uh, just this waiting is, uh, for them. Yeah. That's one of the later boats. There waiting they for are. Them. Yeah. Come behind the island. This is the very last turn for them and then full throttle uh, again. Well, they are full throttle even now, I believe. Anyway, straight uh, down to the finish line. Look at that. That turn was absolutely beautiful. Floated through it, screaming down past the crowd at the lakeside. They're coming up to take 
the checkered boys. There's no flag here waiting for the uh, the boat to cross the boys. Here they yeah, come here down. they are arriving. They Last are rate. steaming down. Just full throttle through this gate. No, they don't need to turn anymore. Just open it. Open the taps up. Cross the line. And that is yet another win for Another Dubai massive police. victory for massive. them. Four wins uh, in a row in four races. Abu Dhabi number four to close in second spot. We see them, they pass just uh, by the finish line and then we will see Good who will come Tutu third. Good news for Tutu sure if they get through this again, they'll, yeah. have, a, they'll have yet another uh, brilliant race. And here uh, I see on the screen, yeah, the camera is on the finish line, to the two offshore is arriving. Here they are, followed by 22 and Team Australia. You know the strange thing about it yeah. is, it's... Uh, it it's, was another it's, angle. Yeah. It's, uh, it's race one ran again if you have a look at the results you'll see the top three exactly the same you go all the way down to fifth yeah, place yeah, fifth yeah. place is abu dhabi five in in sixth place in sixth place uh so yeah. it's yacht club como yeah yacht club como today yeah yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are they arriving right that. now yeah they made it they made it checker flag is for them now oh. yacht club como great uh, yeah we've seen uh, ribo passing but it was a lapped boat uh, so uh, dubai police abu dhabi four to the two offshore Team Australia, Yacht Club Como in the first five spots. Now we are waiting for all the others. Uh, I see, I'm just uh, trying to, to, to see with my eyes outside of the window of our booth. It's uh, Abu Dhabi number five, this MTI boat, uh, as the camera is for uh, Arif and the they, Nadir they Benindi. They've already stopped and they've caught their lunch already, you know. <laughs> the checker flag is still uh, uh, being waved because uh, not all the boats have finished. We are down to the sixth position. There's still Kuwait, Venus Bali, Ribo, and uh, high performance uh, Italia. We see them. Uh, Kuwait now closes in seventh. Abdulatif Falomani and Mustafa Al Dashti from Kuwait, of course. Then in eighth position, seems to me that it's boat number 96. I don't know, maybe they have, uh, they have another, a gap of uh, one extra lap because uh, yeah for the timing they're, they're still in 10 positions so it's uh, they've been lapped two times rosario schiano and francois pinelli they didn't find a good setup of the boat for sure while we are still waiting for the eight and nine should be venus bali and ribo the two let's say cousins boat uh, boats uh, from the same uh, um, owner um, alfredo mato who's also uh, racing on uh, ribo so there it comes Vita there Bali they are crossing yeah. the line Nico Calderola and Andrea Comello in eighth position. They cross the line now. The images still stay on uh, Dubai Police. Of course they do. The winners, the winners. I'm still waiting for the last boat to cross yeah. the finish. But I would say, actually, uh, yeah, Dubai Police, we've mentioned yeah, so many that's times. That's it. We didn't see uh, Ribo again because they, they were lapped, so they passed and they yeah. took uh, the checker flag before. So this is the final uh, uh, results uh, of uh, race two of the Stresa Grand Prix UAM. Uh, uh, XCAT World Championship, Dubai Police, uh, another 35 points, uh, 140 is the total out of a possible 140. Oh no, <laughs> it's just not fair, is it? Not yeah. fair on anybody yeah. else. WW5, unfortunately, one place down on their race one, uh, fifth place. So they're down as well, Rebot. Unfortunately, they've lost a lot of uh, points because they were seventh in race one and they're down in ninth. Uh, Team Q8. Uh, they've done a little bit better in seventh place. In fact, uh, uh, they they were ninth in race one. Yeah, it was good for them. Yeah, as we said, uh, also because okay, Swekat Racing didn't take part in, uh, in the race uh, and even New Star, but still they are they are uh, gaining uh, confidence with their boat, Team Kuwait. Yeah, it's a good point you made there. New Star were were looking good as well in race one, and Swekat, although they weren't expected to do well on this yeah. particular uh, type of surface type of surface type of water um, uh, unfortunately they weren't able to, they, they did fairly well in race one better than i thought they would do but unfortunately no result for them in race two and that's two uh, two races actually uh three races without scoring a point for sweet yeah yeah really disappointing huge, yeah. absolutely they were third last year and they were third in the very first race of this season so yeah it's uh bad bad for them Meanwhile, uh, I put down my mic again because this time uh, I'm just not going to the timing tower but I'm going straight to the podium because we will have the top three drivers uh, going there, we will have the interviews. So uh, from uh, me, uh, meanwhile, thank you for uh, having followed us, thank you for having been uh, connected on live streaming. 
Uh, I'll see you next race uh, and I'll leave you with Clive. Thank you, Clive. Emanuele Di Cele, thank you very much. The man has got a brain the size of a planet which keeps him hi in hyperspace. And thank you very much for being with me uh, for this one. Well, all I've got to do is just tell you about uh, how beautiful it is around this race up because it's going to be a little while before these drivers can get out of their vehicles. There's Nico there. Uh, now I know Nico from the uh, uh, Superstars V8 series who is racing for Roma Racing Team down there and uh, and in fact uh, I think I mentioned yesterday that he turned up on the track with his racing overalls from Superstars. Still had the Superstars patch on it, still had the Roma Racing thing on it because he didn't have any overalls uh, for the team he was in or the boat uh, he was such a late uh, late entry into this and of course you're coming in with a throttle man that you don't know you've never worked with before and it's been actually a pretty good pretty good drive for the Venus Barley team number 46 with Nico uh, in the driver's seat rally driver as uh, Emanuele said so yeah we, we can mention the Dubai police I, I think they've had enough plaudits they've getting enough points and enough mentions and they're just running away with this and in fact when they did do their um, long, long laps, had two long laps to do, the two mandatory long laps uh, we've seen, haven't seen any problems with anybody else, there's no penalties so far in this race because sometimes especially out on the water things can happen and that you will miss some great overhead shot from the drone cam that just shows the pontoon that we've got out here and all the boats lining up they'll be uh, uh, emptying themselves from their drivers and throttle men at the moment they're all walking down to uh, and rather shakily because the pontoon is in fact on water moves around I've walked up and down it and thought I know it's a nice wide uh, wide area to walk up and down but if you if you're not paying attention you could fall off of it it's nice it's wide a nice wide path but it does rock and roll quite a bit and you need to develop your sea legs to be able to walk up and down there and it always surprises me that the drivers and throttle men have been bang banged around so much inside that cockpit even in this relatively flat and calm water uh, you get out of these cockpits you get onto onto that pontoon and don't immediately fall over they are absolutely wrecked 31 degrees temperature out there the temperature is still actually I think I think it might have stabilized at 31 degrees right now but it the Sun is beating down the lake Lake Maggiore the major lake of the region uh, the sister lake to Lake Como which uh, which you all would never get on Lake Como unless you're driving a Riva and uh, also uh, have a model girlfriend and uh, an Armani suit at the same time uh, Lake Maggiore is totally different everybody and anybody time for interviews with the drivers so what an amazing weekend for you double win I know what can we expect from you next uh... well uh, I'd like to thank my uh, brother Arav we did an excellent job the whole crew Dubai police for winning this title it's an excellent uh, venue. I would love to be in Strays. The people are very friendly, very happy to be here. And I thank God we won first place uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday in pole position, and today the second race first. There was a big attack in the final laps from uh, Abu Dhabi number four. Was it difficult to control? Yeah, if you remember yesterday, I told there will be big competition between us and Abu Dhabi and uh, boat number uh, 10 from Italy and boat from the Australian. Uh, we know this will happen, but we'll make it a new strategy, different than yesterday. It's uh, important for us to finish the race, sure, with the number one, to take more bo point, uh, to make it us uh, in the safe side. Amazing job, guys. Thank you.
for seven seconds in front of Abu Dhabi 4. Uh, 222 offshore number 10 in third place in the Blue Rue. The Australians in fourth. Your club Como fifth. Abu Dhabi sixth. Abu Dhabi five in sixth. And Kuwait, Venus Bali, Reebok and HBI team. Reebok uh, and HBI uh, high performance. Uh, Italy both the both have been lapped. Among them all, and still wish to know. Sometimes I like to be a fly on the wall and have a little radio in the boat and in the uh, in the crew areas for Team Australia to find out why they were 38 seconds down off the leaders. Dubai Police. Uh, remember, they did have to do two long laps. Dubai Police really put the hammer down at the first part of the race to stretch that out and so that they could do their long laps without any interference didn't get any interference at all in fact knocked it off the, la the last two laps and a gap between them and Abu Dhabi Police 4 could have been a lot larger than it's shown on screen at the moment and 222 offshore not being pegged back by the Blue Roo and you saw everything the Team Australia uh, number 8 boat was trying to do to close down the number 10 uh, trying the inside, the outside, but when you've got two boats so evenly matched at that time, somebody gets a lead on you, they have the advantage because they get the line into the corner and you could see that they weren't disturbed by any wake from Abu Dhabi 4 in front of them. You could see the gap uh, between uh, Abu Dhabi 4 and 222 offshore so that they wouldn't be in any problem, but the gap was so too short for Team Australia to do anything about it, to close, close up on them. It's it's an amazing feeling sometimes when everything that you've tried, everything that you've planned, everything that you've put together with your team, your teammate, the strategy, uh, the work on the boat, when everything works perfectly, it seems that nothing can go wrong. And so far, for Abu Dhabi Police Team, the champions from last year, although the name has changed to protect the innocent, apparently, uh, they are, well, uh, they're police, of course and um, smart, secure and safe probably is, uh, or, or something else on the side of the boat is that they, they have a, a, a motto for the Dubai police but I can't quite see it at the moment and, uh, and uh, it doesn't look like I'll be able to and I haven't remembered it which is the worst thing you could possibly do it's uh, in English on one side of the boat in Arabic on the other side of the boat in Dubai police colors so yes the green and white which is not only German police colors but also um, uh, Dubai police colors and uh, so and they've got the fastest boat in the world they proved it for years and years time for the interview with second place So, it just maybe took three or four more laps for you to catch out on Dubai Police. What an amazing race. Yeah, really, the boat perf was perfect setup-wise today. We, uh, me and Fala have such a better race today. Yeah. Just every race we take, we, we get more better with each other. We talk less, even though race control could hear us again. Um, and, uh, but we really, and we figure something out in the end of the race in the course that was really yeah. incredible. I wish we figured this yeah, out five laps earlier. Yesterday and today. Yeah. You know, yesterday it will be flat. Today it will be more wave. So uh, that's good sp experience between me and uh, Sean. He's a good driver and we do our best. And the uh, next race in China will be best in uh, the series. So what we can expect from you in China? All we got to do is improve about three seconds over, what, 45 minutes? So I think we can do that. Thank you very much. Great job, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Team Boats in second place, Abu Dhabi 4. Abu Dhabi 5, unfortunately, not having a great weekend this weekend here at Streza. Uh, well, that's the place we knew we've told you about Lake Maggiore, but Streza, beautiful little town. Uh, you sort of, it sort of bursts upon you as you come up from uh, Milan. You're going through these normal, dull colored villages. You turn a corner, all of a sudden the mountains open up in front of you. The thing you think they're, uh, they're clouds and they're not, it's mountains piled upon mountains piled upon mountains then you hit Straza and it is absolutely beautiful it really is so Abu Dhabi 4 in second place um, very shortly once we get the drivers available and uh, throttle men of course uh, 222 offshore team number 10 will be able to get uh, a hold of those it's 
Italian Australian team of Giovanni Carpatella and Darren Nicholson. Meanwhile, the boats behind me, that's it. Smart, secure, together. That's the uh, uh, that's the motto of the Dubai police team <laughs> as they winch it out of the water. Two cranes here to do the uh, duties. And uh, when you say to yourself, I've got to change gear, uh, uh, you just reach over and push a lever. Here, they need a crane, take it out of the water, knock the propellers off, change the propellers, put them back on, bung it back in the water and start the engines, and that's changing gear. Your third place, this is 222 offshore. So we're here with the uh, third place finishers. Uh, great start uh, for you and a good race, positive race. What's the, what's the um, no, tell us the story basically? Well, the story was that uh, the, guy, the start was good. Uh, we have the third line, so we cannot cut. Also, if we are in the front, uh, we maintain our line. After number eight coming inside of uh, number three, so become difficult to us because uh, in uh, half lap we still also in fourth position. So we had to push as a crazy to retake the third position and try to stay with the number four. But uh, in this condition of flat, a little bit wind is very difficult to stay close to the, the other boat. What we can expect from you from the next round? Can you uh, contend the top guys, Abu Dhabi and Dubai Police? Uh, if the next round's a bit rougher, Giovanni's exceptionally great on the throttle, so we'll step it up a bit more. So, uh, uh, do you have an exciting race too? Oh, it's always exciting. It's never dull. <laughs> it's great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank great you. job again. Thank you. Uh, victory team, Italian-Australian team, number 10, 222 offshore. And third place on the podium, another third place. The top three, the same as, in fact, the top four, the same as race one. And uh, you can understand how desperate the Australians were to get on the podium. Not this time, maybe next time. At the moment, and things are subject to change still. It's a, it's a, the series is still taking off with a lot of interest in the XCAT Powerboat Championship, the UIM XCAT Powerboat World Championship. So a uh, lot of interest in it. And the uh, and because there's so much interest, the calendar can be rather fluid at times uh, around when uh, on, and even how many rounds we're going to have. It's uh, brand new. You see the crowd down there waiting for the podium celebrations. So far, we've got round three to come in China at the end of August, early September, August 31st to September the 2nd. There are quite a few Chinese rounds, it looks like, this year. Uh, so far, the latest iteration of the full year uh, shows us with seven races all in all this being race two we should have another uh, we should it looks like according to the calendar we have four races in china and two of them in fact uh, back to back uh, china round, round three and round four are uh, we finish on september the second and the round four starts on september the seventh so it's just a week between rounds predicted for uh, the next two rounds then you go to October and again a week between the two rounds five and six uh, October 19th the 21st and round six October 26th the 28th and then right at the end of the year Dubai and uh, while it's Christmas in Europe or coming up to Christmas in Europe and uh, winter is starting to bite the sun will still be shining in Dubai on the XCAT World Powerboat Championships because we're there from November the 29th till December the 1st. So if you're planning on a holiday, a Dubai holiday, great place to be, huge entertainment, and we'll throw a race in for good measure if you're there between November 29th and December the 1st. That's currently the situation where the calendar is concerned with, with XCATs, but as I said, uh, if interest in the series is just ramping up almost week on week here and, uh, and more and more people are getting involved there's other things happening as well we know that uh, although these uh, uh, power boats are incredibly sleek and fast they have standard engines the only way to make them faster is we've got to get a new boat we've got to get a bigger boat 
and uh, I tell you who is working on another boat, and that is Swicat. They haven't had the best of weekends here. Problems in both races, no score this weekend at all, but they've got a lot of stuff happening. There's a power board in lurking in the paddock as well. It's like a, a very short windsurf board, but with an engine in it, and it's a power board. You hold on to the... Uh, uh, the throttle with one hand, stand on it, and just go batting around the lake. Saw a demonstration of that earlier on, and there might even be a competition, a power board competition, starting up. And I tell you this, there are a lot of girls in that already, and uh, hopefully, maybe someday, um, UIM power boats, X Cats, will be having quite a few different. Uh, ancillary competitions going alongside it, one of them possibly power boards, who knows? And I was talking about Swicat Racing, they are have in development a new boat which will soon will probably break cover sometime in February next year at one of the big uh, uh, American boat shows. And Swicat has confidently already called it a hyper cat. Let's go to the podium. E allora chiamiamo i uh, premiatori che devono effettuare la uh, premiazione. Prima di tutto abbiamo un premio che ha il segno in inglese, il segno in italiano. There's a special prize, so I would like please to have uh, Vincenzo Iaconiani uh, on the stage uh, with us. Then uh, we have uh, uh, Raffaele Chioli, president of the UIM, the World Power Robotic Federation. Andiamo qui sul palco il presidente della Federazione Italiana Motonautica, Vincenzo Iaconiani e il presidente dell'Unione Internazionale della Motonautica, Raffaele Chiunni. Giuseppe Bottini ce l'abbiamo già qua sul palco, Andrea Padurazzi, il splendido padrone di casa della Regina Palace Hotel, il nostro partner in questo evento. Alessandro Basilico, segretario generale della Federazione Italiana Motonautica. Last but not least, of course, the mayor of Yangbu in Saudi Arabia, Mr. Fahad Mishan. Noi salutiamo Mr. Fahad Mishan, il sindaco di Yangbu nell'Arabia Saudita. And it's now time to call on stage uh, the champions of today, the winners of this beautiful uh, second stage of the Stresa GP, 2018 UAM x World Championship. In third position on uh, 2 to 2 offshore, Giovanni Capitella and Darren Nicholson. La canzone è classificata al terzo posto e la 2 to 2 offshore sono Giovanni Capitella e Darren Nicholson.
but be easy to me, look, just a open. So, è un acquarello rappresentante l'isola superiore dei pescatori, l'isola madre e ovviamente poi c'è l'isola bella realizzati da, da Giovanni Fabiani. Quindi insomma un applauso per la consegna da Stresa a Yanku. Sono originali. Ecco fatto. Allora, adesso è il momento della foto di gruppo una che sarà fatta verso il podio, ma una chiaramente anche verso di voi, e allora anche voi, i tifosi di Stresa, entrerete nella storia di questa bella giornata, di questa bella tre giorni con gli Iscat a Stresa. Appuntamento al 2019, il grande applauso per il podio di gara 2, il grande applauso per lo UIM Iscat World Championship. Grazie a tutti, grazie Emanuele, grazie a voi, grazie Gianluca e arrivederci al prossimo anno via Stesa. Grazie a tutti gli organizzatori e davvero grazie a Stesa e buon divertimento a tutti. Sweet. Four races, four, two rounds, a clean sweep for Dubai Police, full points, and we move on to the next race. We will be going far away from Stresa in Italy, which has been a beautiful location for round two. And we go to August the 31st and September the 2nd. China will be seeing the UIM XCAT Powerboat Racing Championships very, very shortly. If you're on holiday, China is the place to be for round three, August the 31st to September the 2nd. And until then, this is Clyde James McNeil saying bye-bye for now. But there it is, the next race is confirmed. 31st August to the 2nd of September. Join the UIM XCAT Powerboat World Championships then. We'll see you then.